Welcome to the Oasis. My name is Mike, and this is the State of VR, your monthly recap of the most important VR gaming news. Apologies, this video is a little bit late. It's been a crazy month for VR and for the channel. You see, for the last four years, I've been working on everything myself, scripting, filming, editing, and I finally decided this week that it was time to get some help. So I posted on Twitter, for an editor and I think I finally found the right person for the job. So hopefully these videos will be on time in the future. I hope you all understand. But like I said, it's been a crazy month for VR, which means we've got loads to talk about, including a killer feature of the Oculus Quest 2, rumors of a new standalone VR headset coming from HTC. We've got new graphics cards from Nvidia, although there are some problems with the new 30 series cards that you might be interested to know about. And we've also got a completely open source VR headset that you can build yourself. And finally, some bad news about Far Cry VR. But before we get into the news, I want to highlight my personal VR game of the month, and that is Star Wars Squadrons. You see, for me, Star Wars Squadrons is like living out a childhood dream of actually sitting in the cockpit of my very own X-Wing and being part of a team of pilots completing epic and dangerous missions together. What makes the game even more interesting for me is that the roughly 10 hour story campaign will have you also piloting Imperial ships and seeing the story play out from both the Empire and Rebels perspectives. It also kind of reminded me of playing Star Fox when I was younger, as when you're on missions, your teammates are constantly talking about the mission at hand, asking for help, and telling their own little stories, which does a great job of immersing you into the Star Wars world. Right now, although I personally thought the experience was amazing, it currently has mixed reviews on Steam. Now, I think this is mainly due to poor HOTAS, which means hands-on throttle and stick configurations, and the game isn't particularly well optimized even for high-end PCs. With a bit of controller mapping and tweaking of the graphical settings, I was able to get the game perfectly playable as I showed in my Star Wars Squadrons video, but I appreciate not everyone has the time or desire to do that. And if you're one of those people, then you'll be pleased to know that EA tweeted out this week that they're working on some performance fixes, which hopefully will be coming soon. Right now, the game only supports keyboard and mouse, game pads, or HOTAS setups. You can't officially use VR motion controllers. However, the team at ProTube have created a workaround, which you can download and try yourself from GitHub. And they showed a video of this in action using the Valve Index controllers and their ProTAS chair mounts. I'll add a link to that in the description down below. I've been playing the game using the Oculus Quest 2 completely wirelessly, and that brings me nicely onto the first bit of news. So the Oculus Quest 2 headset was announced during Facebook Connect on the 16th of September, and I was really fortunate to have one sent over early for review prior to the public release on the 13th of October. I've made a number of videos about the headset already, so if you're interested to learn more about it, go and check those videos out. But in summary, in my opinion, it's the best standalone VR headset and also the best entry level PC VR headset available on the market today. With all the features, it's an amazing deal at just 299 US dollars. But one of the things I've been testing, which I think is a killer feature, is the ability to play PC VR games completely wirelessly streamed from a PC to the headset using a Wi-Fi connection and an app called Virtual Desktop. Mike, we've been able to do that since the original Oculus Quest released, I hear you all say. Yeah, I know, but I've been working with Virtual Desktop and testing out an early build, which enables PC VR content to be streamed to the headset at 90 Hz with a nice bump in resolution, taking advantage of the Quest 2's 1832 by 1920 resolution per eye display with a latency of just 22 to 30 milliseconds. To get this kind of latency, you'll need to be using a 5 GHz Wi-Fi connection, or you can even use a Wi-Fi 6 router, as the Quest 2 supports Wi-Fi 6. Although I should point out, this isn't required for a great wireless experience, a solid 5 GHz connection will do just fine. And at the time of this video, this wireless solution is actually working even better than the official Oculus Link cable, which is still in beta and still locked to the Quest 1's resolution and 72 Hz. And the results playing wirelessly, I have to say, are pretty amazing. Playing games like Half-Life Alex and Star Wars Squadrons is very impressive. And I show this in action in my latest Star Wars Squadrons video. When you consider only a couple of years ago, we were buying $400 wireless modules for both the Oculus Rift CV1 and the HTC Vive to make them wireless. 
And now, with the Oculus Quest 2, this can all be achieved with better results with just a $300 headset and a $20 application. It's amazing what virtual desktop have been able to achieve with the new headset. Sadly, although the application is working at 90 Hz right now in my testing, Oculus will be limiting this functionality when the headset launches to the public on the 13th of October. The developer of Virtual Desktop, Guy Godin, tweeted, PSA, just got word from Oculus that 90 frames per second will be disabled in apps on Oculus Quest 2 at launch, but it will get re-enabled in a future OS update. It does suck that Oculus seem to be holding this back, and hopefully we don't have to wait too much longer after the release of the Quest 2 for this update to Virtual Desktop to become available for everyone. Of course, Oculus Link will also be coming out of beta soon, where you can use a cable to connect your headset to a PC, and will also likely be able to push 90Hz and the higher resolution stream down the Link cable, which is great for those of you out there that don't have a solid 5GHz Wi-Fi connection, but sadly we also don't have a timeline for the Link update either. But let me know if you're as excited about using the Quest 2 wirelessly with a PC as I am in the comments down below. Now, the next bit of news will be interesting if you happen to be one of those people that are avoiding the Quest 2 due to the mandatory Facebook login requirement. You might be happy to hear that the Quest 2 might be getting some competition soon, as it seems that HTC are working on a new Vive Focus standalone VR headset, which also features the latest XR2 chipset from Qualcomm. This news came from Geekbench, which was then reported by TechGenYZ and Road to VR. Geekbench is a benchmarking program to test the performance of PCs and mobile devices, and it seems that someone out there has been testing out this unannounced HTC headset using Geekbench, and the results were uploaded to the site and then made publicly available. The only information we could get so far is that the results showed the device named as the Vive Focus XR2, it has 6GB of memory and runs on Android 10. And as we know already from our hands-on with the Oculus Quest 2, 6GB of memory combined with the XR2 chipset makes a big difference in performance. The XR2 chipset is roughly twice as powerful as the original Quest Snapdragon 835 processor, and it really shows as everything is much snappier and the overall experience with the headset is much, much smoother. I would love to see HTC come to the market with a Quest 2 competitor, but they would really have to offer a good library of content and really price it aggressively to compete, in my opinion. Of course, I'll keep you all posted as soon as I hear any further information about it. Now, the next bit of news comes from NVIDIA, who announced their new line of RTX 30 series graphics cards, which offer great performance and value for those looking for an upgrade. Starting with the cheapest and working our way up, we have the RTX 3070 card, which features 5,888 CUDA cores and 8GB of memory. This will be available in October for $499 US dollars, 469 British pounds. Next, we have the RTX 3080 card, which features 8,704 CUDA cores and 10GB of memory. This is available right now, although everywhere is completely out of stock, and these retail for 699 US dollars, 649 British pounds. And finally, we have the big daddy, the RTX 3090 card, which features a whopping 10,496 CUDA cores and an eye-watering 24 gigabytes of memory. This is going to set you back at 1,499 US dollars or 1,399 British pounds. These are also available to buy right now, but again, completely out of stock at most retailers. The great thing about these cards is that they provide a nice jump in performance over the previous 20 series cards, but come at a lower price tag, which is great for those of you out there that are interested in playing high-end PC VR content, especially with headsets like the Valve Index and the upcoming HP Reverb G2, particularly if you're planning to play games like Star Wars Squadrons or Microsoft Flight Simulator in VR, and by the way, I should probably mention that Microsoft are looking for beta testers for the upcoming VR update to Microsoft Flight Simulator, and I've added a link to the beta signup page in the description down below. But back to the 30 series, all the cards feature a single HDMI 2.1 port and three display 1.4 ports. One thing that was really disappointed to hear is that they've completely dropped support for the USB-C virtual link connector, and it won't be featured on any of the new cards. Now you see, Virtual Link first appeared on the 20 series graphics cards, and the idea was that moving forward, hardware manufacturers of VR headsets would use a single USB-C port for their headsets. 
However, sadly, that didn't materialize and even Valve decided to drop their virtual link adapter for the Valve Index just prior to the headset's launch. One thing to note from watching one of my favorite PC tech and water cooling channels on YouTube called Jay's Two Cents is that there is a slight issue with the power delivery on some of the 30 series cards from third party manufacturers. Apparently some cheaped out on the components, which means some cards won't be running at their full potential. And this is gonna be particularly important if you're interested in overclocking. And if you wanna learn more, I've added a link to Jay's Two Cents video in the description down below. Now, the next bit of news is really interesting, especially if you're the type of person that likes to code and build things, as there's a project called Relativity, which is a build your own open source VR headset. And this all started after a couple of guys called Max Koo and Gabriel Coombe wanted to get into VR, but couldn't afford their own VR headset. So they just decided to build their own headset instead. Now they have their own website up and running with links to all the resources that you need to build your own virtual reality headset, which they estimate will cost as little as 200 US dollars in off the shelf components and an Arduino. Their reference design is 3D printed and uses dual 2K displays running at 120 Hertz. However, you can use any screen you want, which makes this project really interesting. The system is compatible with SteamVR, but it has limited tracking right now as it uses a single camera to track your body's movements based on the video input instead of using SteamVR's lighthouse tracking. This is definitely not for your average consumer though, as it has no controller solution and you would have to hack together existing solutions to work with the headset. It's really only for those out there that are well-versed in modding and tinkering with electronics, I think it's a very interesting concept nevertheless, and I wonder how far this can go with the community all working together on a project like this. If it sounds like something you're interested in, you can check out the website and the Discord in the description down below. And the final bit of news is that Far Cry is coming to virtual reality, although sadly, it's only coming to VR arcades, and more specifically, zero latency VR arcades. The VR experience called Far Cry Dive Into Insanity is based on Far Cry 3 and will have up to 8 players teaming up to fight on Rook Island after being captured by the iconic villain from the original game, Voss. It looks like players will be wearing HP headsets along with PC backpacks and using custom zero latency guns together in a warehouse scale environment. Zero Latency has locations all over the world, and this new experience will be available to play in 2021. I've added a link to check out their website, listing the locations in the description down below. Hopefully, things with COVID will eventually settle down, as I'm sure the VR arcade market, along with many other high street businesses, are really suffering right now with most people staying at home. I think it's a real shame this is going to be for VR arcades only, as I'd love to play Far Cry in VR at home, but it is a good thing that Ubisoft are still committed to VR, despite some setbacks with some of their previous games, such as Space Junkies. You see, Space Junkies was a great competitive online shooter, but it had a very high launch price at around 40 US dollars, which completely killed the game's momentum and sadly its player base. But what we do know is that Ubisoft will be bringing some of their most popular IPs to virtual reality headsets in the home soon, with both Assassin's Creed and Splinter Cell, and I for one, can't wait to play them. And that is it for the State of VR for September 2020. Apologies again that this video was running a little bit late, but what an amazing month for VR. Got new hardware, new exciting games, and potentially more competition and choice for consumers on the horizon. If you're excited for VR and you enjoyed the video, hit that like button. And to keep up to date with all things VR, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And as always, I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.